In today's video, I will show you how I add 3D elements into my videos, as well as the components you need before you even shoot. If you are a filmmaker, content creator, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Place the object that you're going to track in Blender. You want these objects to be contrasty, something that the camera can see from far away. Once that's done, Use a measuring tape to measure one point to another. You're going to be using this to give a scale of your video in contrast to the environment that you're going to build in Blender. Using a video color checker, put it in place next to your scene so you can shoot it with a drone or whatever camera that you are using. This will make sure that you balance your shot in both Blender as well as DaVinci Resolve. Assuming the composite will be done in Fusion, you don't need to do any color grading on this video. Set the output as shown here, I'm using EXR, but this can take a lot of space on your PC. And if you don't want that, you can go for MP4 and she'll take a lesser amount of space. One thing I would suggest is take note of your frame rate because this has to correspond in your blender. Before adding this job for rendering, I suggest you check the color management, change it to ACCC or ACCCT. Check the video link to see how to do this the right way. Now you can render out your output. Just to check the utilization of my memory on my PC, once the rendering is done, you can right click and check the properties. And from this you can see how big these files are. In Blender, we can generate a new VFX. Open the video in the video location. And this is a sequence by the way, because I used EXR. Locate the file. I have this under YouTube tutorials and I name my tutorials accordingly. Select one and press shift to select all of them and press the last one. Bring them abroad. Set up the colors as they were in DaVinci Resolve in your Blender. Say for instance, if you exported this as ACCG, you will want to select ACCG. Under camera, set sensor width to your specific sensor width. If you don't know this information, you can find it online by the way. Under the same section, you can set your camera focal length. From the track section, set scene frames or you can type it in manually if you want to. And if you have a good RAM on your PC, press prefetch to ensure that your video plays smooth when you play back. Under tracking settings, motion model, you can either choose perspective, affine, location, rotation and scale, or location and rotation. You must just understand how this works. And for you to understand them, you can look into the documentation online for Blender. I won't be explaining every other thing, but I can choose perspective or affine or location, rotation and scale. But what I like mostly is affine. Click normalize. And for you to understand what this functions do, you can go into the documentation and just type a fine and you will find one under tricky maybe. Go into that and look for that specific fine documentation. Sometimes you might get more information on this and sometimes you might not. Under marker, click detect features. Blender will do its best to detect features with high contrast. You might also need to add your own features that Blender didn't detect. To do this, you can press Add and click on the feature with high contrast. Use S to scale it up. R can rotate it, G can move it. 
When you are happy with all the points or features, press A to select all these points. Now we can track forward or track backward, depending on where your playhead is. My playhead is in the middle of the track line, so I will track backwards first and then I will track forward. The speed at which your PC is tracking, it depends on the hardware you have on your PC. I'm using RTX A5000 from NVIDIA as well as Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. Don't jump any step, follow all the steps so that you can be good with your video tracking. Go into Soft tab. And here we are looking at keyframe A and keyframe B. And the reason for this is because we are looking for the specific motion that the camera is moving a lot. And you can put that into keyframe A and keyframe B. For me, it's from keyframe 18 up to keyframe 138. Next step is to refine your focal length and your optical sensor. If you are unsure of anything, remember to just go into your Blender documents for reference. Next up is to clean up your tracking markers that are not sticking out throughout the video. For me, it's a few of them, so I will just click and delete. But if you want to do it the quicker way, go into clean up section. When you're done with cleaning up all the markers that are not sticking out throughout the video, you can now press solve camera motion. Check the solve error at the top right corner. Any error less than one pixel should be fine. Select good three markers that are placed on the floor. And in Soft tab, you can select Floor. Next step is to set Origin. Now select any other three that are in the middle of this floor and set Origin. You can see it on the top right corner that the camera is moving to that Origin. If you remember earlier on in this video, I measured these two points to be 2.58 meters. Input this into distance and set scale. Let me move this camera around so you can see or observe these points as they get scaled up. And this what it does, it, it helps you with 3D elements that are drawn to scale to fit your scene. Set up your scene. Currently, I'm using a vehicle that I got from Blender Kit. Next step is to set up your lighting using a HDRI. If you have 360 camera, then I will suggest you use that in the same scene. I do not have this camera, but I will select HDRI that are similar to the scene. I prefer you download EXR file to preserve all these colors that comes with it. In Blender Well Properties, select color and choose environment texture. Locate the HDRI by selecting open. If you need beads, clothing, or merchandise, check out Salty Boy Beads, link in the description. If you like the last that I use on these videos, link in the description. Now we are ready to render. We can select video resolution that matches with our scene. I like to use 50% of this, by the way. Next step is to choose the location for rendering. Change the file format from PNG to open EXR multi-layer. Reason for this is so that you can have all the layers you set up in Blender. 
Last step is to change color management sequencer from sRGB to ACCG. This option preserves more data compared to sRGB. If you are using HDRI, you need to click transparent. For those who want to render out the layers, this is the section you can use to render out each and every other layer. Wait for Blender to complete rendering. If it takes time, you might want to stop things like DaVinci Resolve or the recording, or even your browser. That can give you more speed to rendering process. I use DaVinci Resolve to composite two images together under Fusion, and I'll have a video specific for that. Here's the end result. Cause I don't give a fuck what you say Yeah, I'ma do shit my way So you can go kick rocks I'ma stack bricks up Build what I want to make Yo, I got a lot of shit to say So I'ma do this every day I'll be writing things until I'm fucking buried in my grave Six feet deep wonder, but my body won't If you made it to this point Hit the like button Share this video with your friends Check out this video next See you later, alligators me, But now they fucking learn to see I ain't the one to fuck with Now they looking nervously and I